Silver! Away! A fiery horse with the speed of light. A cloud of dust and a hearty high Silver! The Lone Ranger. In the early days of the western United States, the hardy pioneers faced many dangers. Hostile Indians, outlaws, blazing heat, bitter cold, and worst of all, the torrential floods of springtime. Many of the settlers would have lost their lives and property if it had not been for the masked rider of the plains. No one knew how to combat the forces of nature better than he, and his strength and courage made possible the winning of the West. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoof beats of the great horse Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver! We're heading for Riverside! There's going to be trouble! Oh, Silver! Away! <laughs> High in the mountains, heavy black clouds gathered, then suddenly emptied upon the rocks and crags below. Day after day, while thunder rolled and lightning flashed above desolate canyons, the storms continued. Dry gulches filled with water. Creeks became rivers. Rivers became torrents that roared towards the level plains below. east of the mountains for the little town of Riverside, rested within a bend of Red River, there had been no rain. The sky was clear. The horsemen raced along the main street and out of town toward Munson's ranch house. Get up there. Come on, boy. We gotta see the boss and we gotta see him in a doggone hurry. Get up. Get along with you. Get up there. Come on. Get up. Get up. Stay right there, fella. Boss. So here you are. Early word in thunder, you. Listen, you've been gone a week. How about them cows I sent you after? You trail them down? Won't you give me a chance to talk? Well? Boss, you figured maybe them critters strayed to the north and got lost in them drawers. Didn't they? Wait till I tell it. I made camp in the lion cabin, like you said, and started hunting around. Yeah? No sign of them. So then I... So then I got to thinking of them engines from the hills... They could have stolen them. I decided to find out. That's where you've been? Yeah. But if they stole your steers, we'll never know it. They cleared out. Eh? Left their village, you mean? Uh, not only left it, but took everything along they could carry. Why for? Because that dam of theirs is going to bust. What's what? that? I tell you, nobody down here's got any notion at all how it's been raining up in the hills. Why, it's like a cloudburst lasting a couple of weeks or more. 
Every creek and stream pulled or running over. That ain't happened in 15 years. But if that dam up in the hills goes, it means... It means all that water will come roaring down to carry off the bridge from town. Cut us off from the mainland. You're sure there's been that much rain? The dam won't last more than another 24 hours. You can take my word for it. Oh, God. Well, boss, what do you think? Hadn't we better clear out? If we don't, we won't be able to cross the river till it goes down again. It'll be a couple of weeks. There's cattle on the other side to be looked after. Hold it. I'm thinking. Oh, but boss, you better... The dam will last just about another day, huh? At the most. If the bridge goes, we won't be the only ones cut off. The town will be, too. Sure, they, they, no, that's... Wait. Did you stop in town before you came here? I mean, does anybody else know about this? Uh-uh. I thought you ought to be warned, then the others. Now, if you say so, I'll go back now. And that's a first. I wonder if the folks in town suspicion this. I never heard any talk. I was there most of the morning. <laughs> That's fine. Don't you think I ought to be getting to town? Sure. You and Mort will both go. Oh, he won't be needed. You'll do like I say. You'll both go. Only when you get there, you won't warn nobody. Huh? I'll give you cash to take along. You'll go to every store in town. You'll buy the grub they got and don't stop to haggle. Pay what to ask. Gosh, you local? Not by a long sight. Gosh, we can't. (laughs) Ain't you stopped to figure it out? The town will be cut off. I'll own all the grub. Anybody wants to buy will buy at my price. Come on, I'll rustle up that cash right now. Jason, when I said all the flour you got, that's just what I meant. Why, Curly, what's Munson going to do with all that? Don't you want to sell? For five cents over my regular price? (laughs) I'd be a fool if I didn't. Curly, that stuff will be out to your boss's place inside of two hours. There's your cash, ma'am. That's a deal. <laughs> Land sakes, I never done so much business all to one since I first kept store. Mr. Munson must be aiming to feed an army. Ma'am, that's his affair. I got to load up. That everything, Paul? Everything? You've cleaned me out. Fine. That's just what I figured to do. Early, you and Mort have done a good job. Now tell the boys to see to their guns and stand guard. When the bridge goes and folks see what we've done, there's likely to be trouble. That night, weakening under the pressure of water stored behind it, the dam burst and the flood rushed through the channel of Red River. It followed a rocky gorge down the mountainside until it reached the plains. At Riverside, it struck the flimsy bridge connecting the town with the outside world and demolished it at the first impact. The bridge! The bridge is on! The following morning, the townspeople gathered in Hetty Matthews' general store and... Where did it rain so much? Highest the river's ever been. Can't last, can it? I can't tell. Look out there. Look how the river's racing. Yes, yeah, sure it is. Morning, Sheriff. Morning, Sheriff. Well, Sheriff, what do you think of it? Well, it's awful. A corker, huh? My, who'd ever dreamed this could happen? Reckon you folks realize you won't be able to cross the river for quite a spell, don't you? How long will that be, Sheriff? Any idea? Depends on how things are in the hills. Can't be no less than ten days or two weeks, though. Just think of not getting any mail or visitors for all that time. That ain't what I thought of. Huh? Mail and visitors can keep. But we can't go for long without eating. <laughs> Who says we're gonna? Well, what if the river stays in flood for longer than we expect? What if our grub gives out? <laughs> ain't you kind of barry in trouble? Well, it's something to think of. <laughs> It'll do to worry about till something worse comes along, I guess. Of course, I sold most all my grub to Munson. But Paul and Jason will have plenty. Bound to. I know they What'd got What did you say about me and Jason, Hetty? Oh, the sheriff was just worrying about our grub. I said if folks couldn't buy from me, they could buy from you. But they can't. What, what, what do you mean? Yes, Jason, ask it. That's right. Sold everything we had to Munson. Flour, taters, everything. Well, that's who I sold to. My God. Hey, when was all this? Yesterday for me. Curly come and got it. That's who I sold to. I sold to Mort. That's why Paul and me are here, Hetty. To see if you wouldn't share what you got. But ain't got nothing to share. You folks mean to say that Munson has all the grub there was in town? Well, excepting for the little you see in front of you and what folks have got to home, he must have. Well, that ain't nothing to worry about, is it? 
He'll sell it back, won't he? That's what I'm wondering. But golly, if he... Munson's pretty slick. And I wouldn't trust him as far as I could see through a stone wall. Hetty, why did you folks sell? Why shouldn't we? Who knew this was going to happen? You just asked a question I think I can answer. Uh Huh? Munson. And I'm going there to find out. The sheriff rode to Munson's ranch and tried to reason with him. Steady, boy. Now, Munson, you look here. You've got the grub and I'm admitting it. But the price you're asking is all out of reason. <laughs> Maybe, but you'll pay to go with that. And if folks can't pay... What's that to me? You'd let them starve? It ain't my fault if they ain't saved cash. You... Just keep your temper and listen to me. The grub is mine. It's legal, ask what I want. Remember this. Don't make threats. If it comes to gunplay, I got men enough and plenty over. And besides... Well? Make trouble and I'll get damages from you. You're lower in a pool, Save cat. it. There's your deputy. Now, what does he want? Oh, oh, that. Oh, oh, boy. Oh. Sheriff, there's a fellow setting out to drown himself. Huh? He's making to swim the river on his horse. What's that? You're crazy. Again, that current? He couldn't do it. I'll bet he tries. Who is he? I don't know. But he's got the finest looking horse I ever seen, uh, Whiten. He rode up to the far bank with a redskin. Munson, I'll see you later. Anytime, Sheriff. Anytime at all. Come on, Ray. That's something I aim to see. Get up. Get up, there. boy. Get up. It was the Lone Ranger with his great stallion, Silver, who was preparing to challenge the river. Discarding his mask and assuming a disguise, he sent his mount into the flood, while Tonto, obeying his instructions, remained behind. Silver fought valiantly, while excited townspeople lined the bank to watch the struggle. Just look at him. I'm a praying for both. I think of a horse swim in that kind of a current. I don't know how they can make it. Hey, here comes the sheriff and deputy. Hi, sheriff. Look at here. Ever see the beach, sheriff? Whoa, there. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Whoa, whoa. 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 Sheriff, they'll never ah, make the it. Agents, what are you standing around for? Give that fellow some help. Ray, give me that rope you got on your saddle. Right. Here. What are you going to do? Throw him a line. What do you suppose? Now stand back. Give me room. Better get that line through in a hurry, sheriff. I will. Hi there! Hi, can you hear me? The rope! I'm throwing this rope! There! Short. Pull in and try again. No, wait! He's reaching! By golly, he made it! He did it! Now everybody grab a hold and pull! 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 He's closer. He's going to make it. His horse ought to be touching bottom before long. Don't stop! Everybody together now! Oh, my lads, this is too much excitement for me. He's hit bottom. Here he comes. What a horse. Here we are, boy. Oh, 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 that good fellow. Stranger, never in my life did I see a horse that could do what that was done. It was a close thing. Why, he don't hardly seem more tired than another horse had been after a short run. But, stranger, what made you do it? I knew this flood would catch you off completely. I was afraid it might have caught you unprepared. You need help? Have you supplies enough till the flood goes down? Mister, we ain't. Which makes you just as bad off now as the rest of them. What are you short of? Grub. Not that there ain't enough on hand to feed us if we could just get it. What do you mean? You soon enough find out. Did you talk to Munson, Sheriff? I did. What'd he say? We get no grub till we pay his price. And the price he's asking is a plenty. Won't sell back for what it cost him, eh? Folks, I don't know how, but somehow he must have guessed this was coming. That's why he cornered all the supplies. And he's asking... Well, he's asking just exactly twice what he paid at the first. Ah, wow. oh, the rotten skunk. Who can afford it? But that means going without, starving. One moment. Yeah? If you need food, you can get it. I have an Indian friend on the other side of the river. He can ride with a message. That's no help. Nope, you mean well, stranger, and we thank you. But the Indian might just as well be on the other side of the mountains for all the good he can do us. You're wrong. Well, in the first place, you can't get word to him. He'd never be heard across the river. And if he could hear you... We'd still be as bad off. It'll be another ten days, anyhow, before the river goes down enough to try bridging it. But if you had grub brought, it'd just set there. So you see, mister, we've there got... there are difficulties, but we can get around them. Yeah? We can get word to Tonto, and when the supplies arrive, we'll get them into town. I don't see how. But you will. Now, first for the message to Tonto. <laughs> The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger story. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
Now to continue our story. The Lone Ranger made certain preparations, and half an hour later, he was ready to send a message to Tonto. Hey, I know what that thing is. Oh, gone if it ain't a kite. Well, I flew one of them things when I was just a young'un. Watch it for her. The wind is blowing across the river. Hey, you mean... Tonto has instructions. He's on the watch. When we release the kite, he'll pick it up. The message I affixed to it will do the rest. Well, why in Tuckett couldn't we have thought of that? One of them easy things that just don't come to mind. Yeah, but even you so... You don't know how the supplies will be brought across once they're here, eh? For the life of me, I don't. Well, we'll worry about that later. Ray. Uh-huh? You said you've handled the kite. Take this and send it across. Tonto won't need a signal. He'll understand as soon as it's in the air. I'll have her floating in about two minutes. Now then, Sheriff, how long will the supplies you have last? Not past tomorrow. I see. It'll be several days before Tonto can return. Uh Uh-huh. So we'll have to get food for months and to see us through until then. At his price? For nothing. Stranger, did I understand you to say you figured to get grub for months and for nothing? You did? Well, you're either loco or... You're figuring to take it away with guns. Stranger, if that's what you got in mind, you can count on me. Me too. I'd sure like to throw some lead at them pole cats. Oh, There'll be no trouble. You think not? Where's Munson's place? Just a jog beyond town. Will you ride there with me? Sure, no reason not to. Good. Here, Silver. Had enough rest, old fella. Good boy. Ready, Sheriff? Just a second. All right, any time. You there. Me? Yes. Well, we're going, I want you to round up every able-bodied man in town. There's work ahead and hard work. That's our style. Good. Assemble in front of the sheriff's office. And what'll I tell them? Tell them I have a plan to get supplies across the river and into town when Tonto brings them. I'll explain when the sheriff and I return. Right. Let's go, Sheriff. Get up, get up. Come on, Silver. Come on. <laughs> The cowboy known as Curly noticed the approach of the sheriff and the stranger on the great white stallion. He opened the door of the ranch house and crawled inside. Say, boss. Yeah? Here comes the sheriff again. Got a stranger with him. Where they at? Yeah. Just coming around the bend. <laughs> Likely bringing cash with him. Come on, we'll see what they have to say. Mm-hmm. Stranger must have been caught in town when the bridge went out. Likely. Hey, sheriff. Oh, oh, this oh, 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 oh. <laughs> Well, Sheriff, decided to pay up, did you? Uh, maybe. Maybe not. You can talk that over with this fella. Who are you? Yep. Yeah. That doesn't matter. What does matter is the fact that townspeople must have food. <laughs> I kind of figured that for myself. But they tell me you're asking a price they can't afford to pay. I got a different opinion. I won't argue it. The point is, you're asking far more than those supplies are worth. Yeah, what would you say grub's worth when you're starving? Munson, you low Easy, down. Easy, Sheriff. Then you won't reconsider, huh? You're holding to the price you named. Just so. Well, well, I have a proposition to make. You'll find it fair. Yeah? Give the townspeople the food they need. In return, they'll either pay you back in kind within a week or pay you your own price in cash. Eh? What do you mean, in kind? I mean that for every barrel of flour, every pound of meat, every bushel of potatoes they receive, you'll get back the same amount of flour, meat, and potatoes and whatever else they've taken. They'll do that inside a week? Or give you your price. <laughs> Shucks, mister. If that's your proposition, they might as well pay up right now. They ain't got no more chance of getting supplies into town within that time than, than they have of getting the boss to lower his price. Then you've got nothing to lose by it. I don't quite get your idea. Well, it's the only way we'll deal. As your man said, it doesn't look as though a week is time enough to bring in supplies. So you should have nothing to lose. What do you think, Curly? These fellas noticed something we ain't? There been any sign of the river going down? None at all. Yeah. And if it did, they'd still have their bridge to build afterwards, wouldn't they? Yeah, that's so. And when the week's up, you collect. Yeah. Well, look here. You, Sheriff. You willing to put this proposition down in writing? Should I, stranger? Why not? We'd have kept our words anyhow, wouldn't we? Sure. Yeah, Munson. We'll put it in writing. <laughs> Fine. Come on inside. And remember... Huh? This agreement is binding.
When the agreement had been made out and signed by the sheriff, he and the Lone Ranger mounted and returned to town. Stranger? Yes? I sure hope you know what you're doing. There's no need to worry. I see the men are gathered in front of your office. Must be just about everybody there. The more, the better. Come on, Silver. Get up. Get up there. Get up. Whoa, whoa, there's whoa, 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 whoa. How'd you come out? Make Munson come to terms? Wait. We made a bargain. You can go to Munson's place and get all the food you'll need. What? Uh, the pole can't come down on his price. What'd you do to persuade him? The sheriff can tell you that later. The problem now is how to bridge the river. Well, we'll have plenty of time to figure that out. Can't do nothing till the flood's passed. But we can. What? Listen. Go ahead, mister. We'll borrow an idea from the soldiers. Huh? I'll tell you what I mean. When the Lone Ranger had finished his explanation, one group led by the sheriff returned to Munson's ranch house to get the supplies that had been promised. The remainder followed the Lone Ranger to the dense woods that bordered the west side of town. Soon the sound of axes rang out. The work continued hour after hour. Great trees that had stood for hundreds of years toppled one by one to the earth. As the trees fell, men sprang swiftly forward to trim them of branches. Then, with the help of chains and horses, the work of snaking the logs to the river began. Get up there. Lay into it, you critters. Pull, blast you. Pull. Get up. Get up. Four days the work continued. Four days which finally saw the end of their task in sight. In the meantime, Munson, growing curious, had sent Mort into town to investigate. What Mort saw brought him back to the ranch house at top speed. Oh, oh there. Oh, fella. Oh. Boss, listen here. There's going to be the dickens to pay. Huh? What'd you find out? They've got a way to bridge the river. Yeah, look, or they couldn't have. No? Well, I seen it. But I tell That's you... That's what they've cutting down them logs for. Yeah? They've been hauling them logs down to the river, lashing them together, then stringing them across. They're most ways across right now. But how can they do that? Easy when you figure it. But I can't... The first log's the anchor to the shore. Then they just keep lashing one log to the next one. Looks like they're building a whopping big raft. Why, that dirty skunk. I'll bet they reach the other bank before morning. And that means... They bring the supplies across. To pay me back with and cheat me out of the cash. By thunder, it's a stranger put him up to this. Ain't anybody in town smart enough to think of that. Yeah, and you know what? Huh? That's just why he didn't mind letting the sheriff sign that agreement. He was planning on this stunt all the time. Well, we'll soon fix that. Curly! Hi, Curly! You want me, boss? Come here, Prado. Yes? Inside. Won't you listen to this, too? Uh-huh. We can't let supplies get into town, Savvy. Well, how will we stop them? I'll show you. Curly, how we fix for blasting powder. We got plenty. Good. That's all we'll need. At night... Working by torchlight, the townsmen rushed the completion of their pontoon bridge. The sheriff directed the work. Jason! Hustle them logs out! Paul! Them fellas at the other end need some more chase! Get them some! Ray! Hi, Ray! Where are you? Right here, Sheriff. Where are you? Look there! Huh? There, on the other side of the river. What? The engine! Fine gone! And there, behind him. Ain't them wagons coming? It is! Supplies! Supplies! Hey, fellas, supplies! Fellas, get this finished in Munson's Lake! Come on! Get a move on! Hurry up! But the sheriff did not know that three stealthy figures avoiding the light were edging as close to the pontoon bridge as they dared. Go much closer, boss, and we'll be seen, kid. No, but if we can't get closer, it won't do us no good. We ain't run much risk. They're too doggone busy to take notice of us. 
Come on, you two more. Yeah. Ain't this good enough? It ought to do. I guess so. Here, Mort, you've got the blaster powder. Uh-huh. Push it under right there. Right. Careful with the fuse. I know how to handle this stuff. It's one thing to remember. When it's lit, don't wait for nothing. we got just time enough to clear out, and that's all. There's going to be logs going every which way. But, boss... Well? I, I forgot about there being fellas working. Huh? What do you mean? Well, they'll get blown up, too. Can we help that? But, but gosh, you don't You mean... ain't got the backbone of a rabbit. How you coming, Mort? Just about finished. Hurry it up. Wait. There. Got a match? Uh-huh. I'll light it. Get set. Go on. I'll... No, you don't. What What's the hell? that man? You can't. I've been watching you fellas for just this. Careful. Don't touch that blasting powder. I think the sheriff's going to be interested to see it. Come on, rush Back. it. Back. Oh, no, my hand. You're not hurt. Oh, wait, no, don't. Stand right where you are. Here you are, Sheriff. Hey, what's happening here? Look there. What? Blasting powder. All set to be touched off. Why, why the poor cats would have murdered us. Right. Munson, if I didn't represent the law... I'd say you deserve lynching. No, no. Keep them back. Don't let them get us stout. They won't, worse luck. Not that it'll do you much good. I reckon the law will hang even if it takes a mite longer to get around. I tell you, I didn't... And look there. Huh? We finished the bridge. They're already bringing supplies across. And Munson, the stranger out thought you from start to finish. heard as a copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated. <laughs> <laughs>